Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Guys, stay with me. Shalom. And in today's class, we're going to be doing our next installment out of Visions chapter 3. Yeah, we're going to be starting um, verse 106. Yep, we're going to go as far as the Father will lead us, hopefully to the end of the chapter. And because once we finish, um, I think it's through 133, if I'm not mistaken, we will be at a completion of our teaching on the Hermit series. Is that correct? Yep, it is verse 133. And once we make it to verse 133, we would have done a study on every verse out of the entire book of the Shepherd of Hermits. Mm -hmm. All three books, in fact, Visions. Commands and similitudes. Yeah, and believe me, we have learned a lot from the book of, book of Hermas, a lot of stuff that we apply to our lives every day. Yeah, and if you, when you read the Shepherd of Hermas, you find out that it is actually a commission or that we are given the commandment to actually teach the Shepherd of Hermas. And by being obedient to that commandment, we've actually learned more than the other 20 or 30 times that we read the book for ourselves. Yeah, you always say that we learn more by teaching. What is those numbers that you get? Well, there's something called the learning pyramid. It says sometimes refers as the cone of learning developed by the National Training Laboratory suggests that most students only remember about 10% of what they read. Mm -hmm. from textbooks, but retain 90% of what they learn through teaching others. Wow. Wow. So everybody should be teaching. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. And like we said, the Shepherd of Hermes actually gives us the commandment to go over and to teach others. Well, you think about that. 10% of what you read. Mm -hmm. You know, we've read this book between the both of us probably over 20 times. Mm -hmm. But by teaching it, we actually learned more through one iteration than we did in all of those other times of actually reading it for ourselves. Wow. Mm, that's amazing. It says you learn 5% through lecture, 10% through reading, 20% through audio or visual, 30% through demonstration, 50% through a discussion as if we were to do it live. 75% through practice or doing, but 90% through teaching. Wow. Very fascinating. Again, we say all of that to remind you guys that you all should be starting your Hermes classes, even if you're teaching no more than your spouse and children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like to just get along with myself in the um, greenhouse and... You ain't going to say you teach yourself. And pretend that I'm talking to someone. Yeah. You know, that's kind of crazy, I know. But I do learn a lot with my make-believe students. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> don't, say, don't say who the other is may be. You know, you teaching the plants or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, for everybody... 100% of the people who are watching this video, you all have YouTube channels, every one of you do. You know, you may not have videos on it or something like that, but, you know, you'd be surprised how easy it is to actually create a YouTube channel devoted to the teaching of Hermes. In fact, that's what Hermes Academy was supposed to be about, was it was supposed to be several different channels that participated in the teaching of the Shepherd of Hermes. So if you have any classes on your channel where you're teaching the Shepherd of Hermes, let me know. We'll come in and we'll actually promote them from our channel. Right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's jump on into it. Verse 106. Okay. We need to give them any background for those who haven't watched the other classes. In the previous verses of um, chapter 3 of, the, of Visions, we were talking about building the church. Yeah, talking about that third temple. It's a very important book here um, because it gives us a visual um, illustration of what the third temple will be like and how it will be constructed. Mm -hmm. And so we've gone through the building process, who will be building it, who will be included in the third temple, and given a lot of details on that. 106. As she was going away, I asked her, 
that she would reveal to me what concerned the three forms in which she had appeared unto me. Okay, so now remember that Hermes is still yet in a dream state. He hasn't matured enough to hear directly from an angel like he will in the last part of this book called Similitudes. So here he's still dreaming. And if you remember, she appeared to him in three different forms. And so she's asking him, you know, what, what, why were you, you know, one time you looked like an old lady and another time you looked like a young lady. 107. But she answering said unto me, concerning these things, you must ask some other that they may be revealed unto you. So you remember who it is that's going to reveal it to her, right? That would be the angel. That would be the shepherd. He's going to come in and he's going to explain all of that to him. I was thinking that it was the angel, that young venerable guy that came in and made the distinction of why she appeared as three different, why she looked three different ways. It actually, you're actually right. It was this young angel that's going to explain this to Hermes. But the thing about it, we find out in... The introduction to the commands that that same angel right. is the shepherd. Right. You're right. Okay. Which this book gets its name from the shepherd of Hermas. That is the venerable angel. We find out that it is Uriel, the angel over our repentance. But anyway, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. 108. Now, brothering, in the first vision, the last year, she appeared unto me exceedingly old and sitting in a chair. Okay, so this would have been the first time that Hermes saw this lady in his vision. She was old and sitting in a chair. Yeah, you guys will remember that she told Hermes to sit down and he wanted to take a, a position on the right. But she told him that it was not time for him to sit there, um, that he should sit at the left of her. Right. Mm -hmm. 109. In another vision, she had indeed a youthful face, but her flesh and her hair was old, but she talked with me standing and was more cheerful than the first time. Okay, so the second time she appeared to him in a vision, she had a youthful face, but her flesh and hair were still old. And instead of sitting in a chair, she was standing and was more cheerful than the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the third vision... She was in all respects much younger and comely to the eye. Only she had the hair of an aged person, yet she looked cheerful and stayed upon a seat. So now I think if she had been getting older in the visions, Hermes might not have thought about it too much. But the fact that she's actually growing younger, as it appears to Hermes, he's like, what's going on with this lady? Yeah, I would think that would be kind of strange. You know, it, it, every sense of... of Beings, we grow older, but this lady is getting younger. Yep. Yeah. 111. I was therefore very sad concerning these things until I might understand the vision. Now, this is, like you said, Hermes was one of the best people to be tasked with writing this book because he's inquisitive, he wants to know everything, Doesn't no, nothing gets past Hermes. Yeah, he has a lot of questions. You know, this reminds me of my college days, and you'd be sitting there in a calculus class, you know, and the teacher is up there talking, and, you know, many of the students would not stop her and ask questions even when they didn't understand something. And then when it came test time, these same students would struggle because they didn't understand when the teacher was talking, where other students in the class, anytime they didn't understand the thing, they would stop the teacher and say, hey, what, what are you talking about? So did that get on the teacher's nerves? Actually, the teacher appreciated it more because, especially the ones who like to teach, because what they realized that if one person who usually turns out to be one of the smarter people in the class is struggling with a concept, that means that the whole class yeah. doesn't get it. Right. Mm -hmm. 112. Wherefore, I saw the same old lady in a vision of the night saying unto me, All prayer needed humiliation. Fast, therefore, and thou shalt learn from the Lord that which thou doest ask. I fasted, therefore, one day. Now, this is important for our understanding how this lady tells Hermes that all prayer needs humiliation. 
when we go to the Father and we're asking a thing of him, we have to be humble in our approach or we may not and probably won't get an answer to those things that we're asking for. Well, this goes against some of the teaching that I received when I was a part of the charismatic uh, church where we were uh, taught to go to the throne boldly and demand what we wanted. <laughs> really? Yeah, we were taught that. We were taught that it was ours, and the Father said, if we ask, we shall receive, and to not let Satan come in and hinder what we wanted, so we should boldly go to the throne of the Father and uh, demand what we wanted. Yeah, so I'm imagining you guys, somebody sitting there, instead of going to the Father and saying, please, they actually say the D word. What? Do it? Do it, damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't get to that, but we, you know, I, I come to think of it, I never got that I want it, but yeah, we were taught to boldly go to the throne. Well, that you know, that's why you start off your prayer saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Mm -hmm. That is a form of humility, recognizing that we are talking to the supreme being. Yeah, that we are lowly and that he is the creator. You know, not only is he the creator of the heavens, but he's the creator of everything. And then it goes on, it says, fast, therefore, and thou shalt learn from the Lord that which thou dost ask. So now this, you know, we could talk about this for a while because it's also talking about when we are asking questions and how it is necessary and that it costs us merits sometime to get the answers. That's why a lot of times we have to suffer humiliations mm -hmm. before information is revealed to us yeah mm -hmm. sometimes it's in the form of physical pain other times people are calling us names or doing different stuff yeah so we really should take advantage of this information you know when we're going before the lord to think that we should be doing something in order to gain merits in those times when we really need our prayers answered mm -hmm. you know it's talking about fasting there you know of course that's humiliation for the flesh but we also could be doing charitable deeds for people, praying for other people. Um, a lot of times when I'm struggling with a class that, you know, I'm not gaining all of the information I need to understand what I need to know in order to do that class, I'll stop and I'll start praying for other people. And then later on that day, the answers that I need will come come to me. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, uh, because we know that there are several ways of fasting, you know, our first thought is usually by way of food, but we have learned from the Third Testament that fasting uh, by doing merits and helping others is a way of fasting also. And I say that to say going and helping people, especially those who have um, things against you, humbling yourself before them is a great way of gaining, of gaining merits, yeah. 113. The same night a young man appeared to me and said, Why doest thou often desire revelations in thy prayers? Take heed that by asking many things, you hurt not the body, lest these revelations suffice thee. Now, here it is, he's saying the same thing. But, okay, there's a lot to unpack here in this verse. First thing we have to notice is that here's this young man you were talking about. Mm -hmm. This is going to be the shepherd that's going to teach Hermas the commands. And in the book called Similitudes, he's going to show Hermas a lot of uh, uh, parables um, to help increase our understanding on this world around us. But then notice right there where he's saying, take heed that by asking many things, thou hurt not the body. See, this is what we were talking about in the previous verse. In order to get these revelations, it's going to require merits. Mm -hmm. It's going to require something on our part. And if we're not willing to fast or do stuff for others or humiliate ourselves in some way, but yet we are still requiring these revelations, well, then it's going to hurt our body. Then it's going to cost us physically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So that's important to understand, especially for, you know, anybody who's, you know, working to understand and unlock these deep secrets of the Bible is that if you don't want to be physically harmed, then you're going to actually have to go out and do charitable deeds. Right. Mm -hmm. 114. Canest thou see more notable revelations than these which thou hast already received? <laughs> yeah. So Harvest has gotten the vision of the third temple. And now he wants more information. Like I said, Hermes is the best guy for this class because yeah. a lot of us would have been overwhelmed by what we've gotten so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I answered and said unto him, Sir, I only ask this one thing upon the account of the three figures of the old woman that appeared to me that the revelations may be complete. Yeah. But, you know, Hermes is going to keep asking questions throughout the whole book. Yeah. He's very inquisitive, but he, right here he's saying, you know, what's up with this lady and why is she growing younger? Mm -hmm. He answered me, you are not without understanding, but your doubts make you so. For as much as you have not your heart with the Lord. So, you know, we have to understand that Hermes is a spirit being just like the rest of us. But what he's seeing with his eyes isn't matching up. Right. With his own understanding. And so that's what's creating this doubt. Yeah. And that would be with the rest of us. You know, yeah. a lot of times we think that, you know, if I was put in that situation, I would have done something different. You know, if I was the Messiah, I would have done something different than went on the cross. Or, you know, we always seem to think that we would have done it better. Yeah. But we would have had doubts as well. I see this old lady who's getting younger. Mm -hmm. She went from gray hair to now she's younger and her skin is more supple and pretty. And how is this happening? Mm -hmm. So that might have brought on the doubts. But then you notice right there, it says, for as much as you have not your heart with the Lord. And the reason why Herman doesn't have his heart fully set on the Lord so far in this story is because he hasn't gone through the commands yet. Right. Right. So, you know, that's necessary for him to gain his maturity where he can even get more information is that he's going to have to learn the commands. Mm -hmm. And that goes for the rest of us, too. You mm -hmm. know, if these are the first um, of the Shepherd of Hermes that you're hearing about, you want to go ahead, you know, and, you know, finish up with the, the book called Visions. But then you want to get into the second book of the Shepherd of Hermes called Commands and really spend a lot of time there making sure you understand those commands and apply them to your life. And you did say you have created a playlist, right? Yeah, I've created a few playlists. One was on the uh, commands. So you can find those, you know, the playlist for the book called Commands and also a playlist for the book called Similitudes. And as soon as we finish this one up, we will have the one for Visions. And so, like I said, we got a class for every verse out of the Shepherd of Hermes. 117. I replied and said, but we shall learn these things more carefully from you. But now we remember this is the first time he's seen this guy. They're still talking about this, this young man, but Hermes has only heard from the old lady so far. Mm -hmm. But he's already willing to learn from this individual. Yeah. Here then says he, concerning the figures about which you inquire. Okay. Again, he wants to know what is up with this lady, so he's going to explain it to us. And first in the first vision, she appeared to thee in the shape of an old woman sitting in a chair, because your old spirit was decayed and without strength by reason of your infirmities and the doubtfulness of your heart. So here it is. We have to make the connection because she's like, Thomas is asking about this old lady, but this shepherd is talking about us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's saying that, that she was sitting in a chair because our spirits were old and decayed. Mm -hmm. And without strength by reason of your infirmities and the doubtfulness of your heart. Yeah. So in other words, that lady was a representation of us. Ain't that what it's saying there? He's asking about the woman, but the shepherd is talking about us. Yeah. He's saying because you, your spirit was old. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. So this is 
a subtle way of making us understand that this woman is a representation of us. It should remind us of Revelation chapter 12, where the woman goes into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Well, it is us that he's talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. This woman is the church. This woman is us, the body of Christ. Understanding that what we gather from this is when we start this journey in Hermes, that our spirit is old and decayed. Right. You know, we're, we're, we're kind of in a beat down state, at least I was, when I started along this journey because, you know, life had taken its toll on us. And it says that our spirit is this way because of the infirmities and because of our doubt. And because of doubtfulness in our heart. You're mm -hmm. right. Yeah. 120. For as they who are old have no hope of renewing themselves, nor expect anything but their departure. So you being weakened through your worldly affairs, gave yourself up to sloth, and cast not away your solicitude from yourselves upon the Lord. And your sense was confused, and you grow old in your sadness. So this is talking about the time in which we are introduced to the shepherd of Hermes. This is the way that we were. This is the way that we were. Yeah. For some of us who are new to this, this is the way that we are. We have no hope for anything other than departing and going away from this world. Yeah. You speak a lot about that. And, you know, a lot of the, um, the ministers that we hear about, this is a lot of what... Christians, and I hate to, you know, just separate them. Uh, this is what a lot of people think that they're going to do. They're living and then they're just going to depart. Well, you know, a lot of that comes from the Paulinian doctrine, which only speaks of where they go in the afterlife. It mm -hmm. doesn't really tell them about the promises of Moses and how when you obey the law, obeying the law is life. They only know of the going away into the spirit world, what they call the rapture. Right. Mm -hmm. Then notice that it says, so you been weakened through your worldly affairs. No, right. right. this is talking about, you know, the existence, you know, speaking for ourselves, where we were before we started this journey. Talk, is this talking about materialism? Yeah, talking about jobs, talking about materialism, the, the, all, everything of the world, that what we call civilization, mm -hmm. all those things that interfere with our relationship with the Father, those things are weakening us. Yeah, they make us weak, yeah. Mm -hmm. And by doing so, what does it say? We gave up ourselves to sloth, so that would be sloth as far as the ministry is right. concerned. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people think that having those things make you stronger, but we see that when walking with the Father, having those things make us weak. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, solicitudes mean care or concern for someone or something. So he's telling Hermes that he cast not away his cares from ourselves upon the Lord. Meaning that we didn't put our cares, we did not give them to the Father. Right. And so our sense was confused. And we grew old in our sadness. Right. 121. But, sir, I would know why she sat up on a chair. Like I said, Hermes, he asks, he just asks all kinds of questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 122. He answered, because everyone that is weak sitteth up on a chair by reason of his infirmity, that his weakness may be upheld. Behold, therefore, the figure of the first vision. Yeah, so you have her sitting in this uh, chair, which would have a back in it, unlike a bench, which may not have a back to it at all. So for the person sitting in this chair is a little bit weaker. Yeah. yeah we'll the, find out. Yeah, the, the, the back of the chair is able to uh, hold up, to stabilize the person that is weak. And so we see that when we first began this walk, become this walk, we're weak and we need that back to hold us up. We're definitely weak when we start, you know, doubtfulness, like it says, confusion. You know, a lot of us, um, myself included, was misguided in the doctrines of 
the church, mm -hmm. you know, thinking one way and then only later on after we become obedient to the scripture that we find out, you know, that the father actually has this world set up a different way than we was taught. Yeah, we are pretty weak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 123. In the second vision, you saw her standing and having a youthful face and more cheerful than her former, but her flesh and her hair was ancient. Here said he this parable also. So the difference is that she's not sitting in a chair anymore. She's actually standing and her face is youthful, whereas before she looked like an old lady. She's cheerful, but she still has the flesh and the hair of an old lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's somewhat wrinkly, I guess, have wrinkles and her hair is great. Okay. Let us say that there's nothing wrong with wrinkles. <laughs> But, you know, this is what it's referring to. 124. When anyone grows old, he despairs of himself by reason of his infirmity and poverty and expects nothing but the last day of his life. Okay, now this is what he said, you know, with respect to the first vision is that he's ready to die. Yeah. You know, it's like there's nothing else to life than the last day that we have here on the planet and we're ready to go on to those so-called higher mansions. Right. Mm -hmm. 125. But on a sudden, an inheritance is left to him and he hears of it and rises and being become cheerful, he puts on new strength and he now no longer sits down but stands and is delivered from his former sorrow. And sits not, but acts manfully. Now, I thought about this verse a little bit. And how you can have an individual, an old man, who may be thinking nothing more than about the day that he dies. But yet, when he gets a huge inheritance, you'll see his life change. Yeah, it's like he will become alive again. Yeah, definitely. The next time you see him, he's going to have on new clothes. Mm -hmm. He may have a new car. Clean he's, shaven. He's, Definitely going to be clean. He's, <laughs> he's going to be riding around taking care of business, you know, as if he was a young man. Again, he may still have the same ailments. Right. He may still have the same cane, but he's going to have a different type of attitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's similar to what happens to us when we start to realize what Hermes is all about. Yeah. Whereas before our spirits were kind of old and we were kind of only thinking about the day that we died. Now we start to hear about Hermes. And all that the Father has for us, it, it, it does something to us, makes us more lively, it changes our spirits, makes us more cheerful. Yeah, it brings new life to us. Good way, yeah, definitely, new life. Mm -hmm. 126. So you, having heard the revelations which God revealed unto you, because God had compassion upon you and renewed your spirit, both laid aside your infirmities, and strength came to you, and you grew strong in the faith, and God, seeing your strength, rejoiced. Yep, so, you know, and like we say, you know, we speak for ourselves. This is actually what happened to us where, you know, we're different people now. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. We're stronger. We, you know, have hope for the future. Right. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, um, changed once we start getting this revelation of the shepherd of Hermes. And I could say a lot of the infirmities that we did have now that we are stronger and we are um, have new life into us, a lot of those old infirmities are still there but they don't bother us as bad. As yeah, much. but and, and a lot of them aren't even there anymore. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of the, the infirmities right. we, we find out that, you know, because of our obedience to these commands, a lot of the ailments tend to go away. Mm -hmm. You know, Many a lot of, of healing has taken place over the last few years, and we can attribute it to what we're reading here about these infirmities going away. A lot, 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 lot of, um, a lot of the infirmities. Yeah, right before I started this journey, you know, I was taking a handful of pills every day, mm -hmm. you know, for, you know, cholesterol and high blood pressure and, you know, all kinds of stuff. But I don't take a pill today at all. Praise yeah. the Father, yeah. Mm -hmm. 127. For this cause, he showed you the building of the tower and will show other things unto you 
If you shall have peace with all your heart among each other. Okay, so now it's saying for this cause he showed him the building of the tower for this reason. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Wonder what. Um, maybe because you have put away the doubtfulness and you're open to to being able to to believe and see these things. Oh, so he gave him these revelations so that he could build his strength up. That's what it seems to be saying oh, okay. to me. Okay, now it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So that he could grow in faith, he showed them how this tower would actually be constructed. Mm -hmm. Okay. 128. But in the third vision, you saw her yet younger, fair and cheerful, and of a serene countenance. So here he is talking about the third time that he saw this lady, and she's generally younger altogether. Yeah. Mm hmm For as if some good news comes to him that is sad, he straightway forgets his sadness, and regards nothing else but the good news which he has heard. And for the rest, he is comforted, and his spirit is renewed through the joy which he has received. For even so you have been refreshed in your spirit by seeing these good things. So, you know, you definitely should be reading the Shepherd of Hermes. I don't know if you stumbled upon this class for the first time or what, but, you know, after this class is over, you should find in the description of this video a link to this book. There's both an audio version and a PDF version, you know, Go in and take about four hours and listen to this entire book. It could change you. It's definitely going to change you. Yeah, and it's not a boring um, audio. It's not a boring read. Um, it's very... Um, very fast moving. Yeah, dramatized. Yes. And, yeah. yeah, it's a very good read. Full of revelations and insight on this third temple. And, you know, like it's saying here, this is what it's saying here is true. It's going to renew your spirit when you get this information. Mm -hmm. 130. And for that, you saw her sitting upon a bench. It denotes a strong position because a bench has four feet and stands strongly. And even the world itself is upheld by the four elements. So now she's in a strong position. So we've seen how our spirit grows over the time that we are um, getting this information from the Shepherd of Hermes. Whereas we started off weak, now we are stronger. Yeah, we started off slowful and had many infirmities. And now we're strong. And I don't see where it even listed the word infirmities in this position. Yeah. So, you know, you can think they are, that we are completely healed once we get to this point where we understand the Shepherd of Hermes. But we also have to understand that, you know, it's required to actually teach this information, too. We can't just hear it, read it. We actually need to teach it so that we can get that 90 percent understanding that we need out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 131. They, therefore, that repent perfectly shall be young. And they that turn from their sins with their whole heart shall be established. So now this is who the shepherd of Hermes is. He is the angel of repentance. And that's what this entire book is about is repenting. What's so great about being able to repent? What's the what's the deal with repenting? Well, the main deal with repenting is that you've demonstrated to the father that you understand the error in your ways. Mm -hmm. You know, like the child who has done something wrong. If you have to chase them down and convince them that what they did was wrong, the punishment schedule will be way more severe than if they admitted what they did was wrong, even to go on and apologize and to repent of what their actions were, you may not punish them at all. Right. You may even give them a big hug and say, that's all right, baby. That's all right. That's well, true. that's what repentance does for us is it demonstrates to the father that we have learned our lesson and we're ready to move on. And another thing about, I think, repenting is because, you know, there's a lot of times where we can say, father, I'm sorry, but there is required action, you know, for the more actions. Now you can't continue to do this thing. You have to stop it. Yeah, there's a big difference between being apologetic and being repentful. 
Um, the person who is apologetic, there's nothing to say that they'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. You know, like this person who's speeding in the car, you know, pulled over by the officer. You know, she may say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, you know, there's nothing to say that she's never going to speed again. She probably will as soon as she's out of the eyesight of the officer. <laughs> yeah, as soon as he ain't looking and she's sure that she ain't looking, she's going to be doing the same thing. But, you know, once she stands before the judge and maybe even does some jail time before you know, around her actions, now she may get a little bit repentant. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want that anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 132. And now you have the revelation fully. Ask no more to have anything Father revealed unto you. Now, again, this is the vision here. Hermes is getting this information in this first book by way of a vision. A dream is what we would call it. But you get the same thing over in the book of Similitudes. In chapter 9 of Similitudes, you hear about this tower. And, you know, it's, it's a lot more clearer because he's hearing directly from an angel. This is the, actually the first book in all of scripture that is actually taught by an angel. You know, that's mm -hmm. what the difference in this book and every other book that you'll read is, you know, the other books, you know, were dictated from angels and were written by humans. Um, this one, we actually are hearing from the angels directly. Right. And lastly, 133. But if anything... To be revealed, it shall be made manifest unto you. And it is going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be made manifest to Hermes. Um, this is a great book, guys. Um, be sure to go in and, you know, read it, listen to it, study it, teach it. Yeah. This is the Shepherd of Hermes. All right. So we made it to the end. Yeah, I feel uh, very blessed to have been given the opportunity to teach well to come in and assist you in teaching this class because um, it has changed our lives for for the better. Well, you know, you, you've done a lot to teach as well. You know, we get a lot of comments from the viewers, you know, on how they appreciate you um, teaching as well. It's not just been me, but, you know, you, you, you have done a lot as far as you know, helping us to gain understanding from this book. And you got some more classes to do, don't you? Yeah, we're coming up with a new series, um, lessons, everyday lessons from um, the book of Hermas. Uh, our first class is being done on unrighteous thoughts and righteous thoughts. So I hope you guys will tune in for that series. Um, I think it will help us um, on our everyday journey um, trying to strive for the kingdom. So we'll continue to put out classes on Hermes. We'll start hearing more from Stacy on these classes, but they'll probably be shorter classes than these, right? Yeah, I'm hoping to have these classes at least 10 to 15 minutes long, no, no longer. All right. Well, that's good, guys. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, make sure you have that bell notification button pushed so you can see when these classes come out. Um, but again, I tell you guys, go in and start teaching on the book yourself. If you do, send me a link to your video. You know, I'll help promote videos that you do teaching the Shepherd of Hermas, especially when you help getting this vital information out. We all need to hear this information. Mm hmm. It's very important. All right. Well, anything else? I believe that's all I have. Well, may our Lord bless you and keep you. May our Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom.